We have the opportunity to make a habit of empathy, to recognize ourselves in each other. I'm Ike Lassiter, um, originally born and raised in Texas, went to school for a while on the East Coast, lived for 35 years in the Bay Area, currently living in Poland and uh, doing workshops in Australia, the U.S., and Europe. So I spend my, a great deal of my time traveling. And I spent uh, 20 years uh, as a trial lawyer in Northern California in the Bay Area. Built a law firm for most of that time um, and tried larger and larger, more complex uh, civil lawsuits, non-criminal lawsuits. Well, I talk about it in the workshops that I offer. Um, so one thing I say about empathy is that empathy is both a need and a process. So it seems to me to be important that people are clear that, and that differentiation and what they're talking about. It cer certainly is for me. So I have a need for empathy. What, what that means for me is, is I, as a human, believe that it's universal for all humans, but at least definitely with me, to be understood in a certain way, to just kind of be gotten. Not that a person agrees with me or has a sympathetic response to, I don't want them necessarily to, to try to feel the same way I feel or to have the same experience, but just that I be understood, that I be gotten, that, that whatever it is that's going on for me is going on. And that's what I call empathy and having my need for empathy met. Then there's the process of how that happens. And given the background in, that I have in the training in nonviolent communication, it's a process that Marshall Rosenberg uh, is the one who introduced it into my world. And that's the process of how can I demonstrate to another person that I get them in this way that I'm pointing to, that I don't really have good words to describe, but I'm pointing to, uh, so that that person uh, can at some point in the process say, oh, my need for empathy has been met, or is being met, or is currently met. Uh, it's someone, other, someone is getting me. I'm getting it. So that's one piece, that differentiation. Then that's all based upon what I was just talking about is based upon uh, myself and another in, in a process of empathy. One of the kind of paradoxical things is, is that I can also meet my need for empathy, have been gotten in a certain way, without the other. That I can do an internal process, the journaling or uh, kind of going through it in my own mind, that will also create a kind of clarity about what need it is that is important to me at this moment that's behind all of the thoughts that I'm having, that maybe the agitation or the distress or the happiness and the joy I'm having. And that also can meet my need for empathy. So there's not, those are some differentiations that help me have some clarity. But even when I say that, I realize that it, for someone brand new to those differentiations, it may not be so clear what I mean when I say empathy. Well, that's how I can measure when my need for empathy has been met, is when, I've, when I feel a physiological shift in me, when I name what it is that is my need right now. When I come in contact with it, when I identify it, there's all sorts of ways, again, to point out a process that, that doesn't have good language to refer to it, but I know it when I have met my need for empathy because I feel this internal shift, this physiological shift. There's all sorts of metaphorical language that goes on for this. That what, what I was talking about, er, what I was referring to earlier is, I just want to acknowledge that I, I don't have any science for, for what this is. I don't know how to name it. I don't know, uh, I don't know exactly what goes on. I don't have a story as to what exactly goes on. It's just this phenomena that I've experienced over and over again that people that I've been with and worked with report to me something similar. It's that this, it's this internal shift 
in my feeling state that in me it has a kind of clunk and it tends to be in my trunk and it's a kind of settling in. It's like, oh, that's, that's what it is for me. I've, I, haven't, I hadn't gotten it until just then and now I got it. So it's first a kind of self-connection with myself and then it's particularly sweet if there's someone who I have had some sense, if I'm in discord with or in conflict with, and had some sense that they're not hearing me, not getting me. And if, if in that moment I trust that they're getting me in this way, seeing what is common between us, this universal need, for instance, a need for respect or for consideration of my life experience or something like that, if I really get the sense that the other gets it, and then I understand it at that same moment. There's this kind of settling in and clunk in my own physiology, and there's this something that we point to and use, I've used the word connection. Um, there, there's this quality of connection between us, and now it kind of opens up my caring. It opens up a space for me to care about the other person, whereas before I've kind of been in my space, not believing that I'm being heard, not trusting that they care, and now there's this kind of opening to where now I can include them in my care about the world, not just care about myself. So one thing I was just doing is that with uh, empathy, there's a a um, a quality where you can empathize with somebody verbally, mm-hmm. and you can kind of uh, uh, empathize with them in their mo- motions. Mm-hmm. And I was trying to follow your motions mm-hmm. as well, and I got lost. <laughs> <laughs> so that's just uh, kind of what happened at that second. Then I'm trying to kind of uh, kind of experiment a bit with that, trying to follow somebody in, in their in the feelings that uh, that they're doing. Well, one thing, that sounds more t- to me uh, uh, more like NLP, of a kind of mirroring the body language, the intonation, the, and using the eyes and the facial muscles to kind of demonstrate to the other person that you're getting them. What I've found is, is that if I can do silently what I do out loud with a person, so I can empathize with a person silently in my own head while they're talking, and what I've had people report over and over again, and what I've experienced on the receiving end of that is, is that whatever then gets communicated through the micro-movements of the body and the intonation, the facial structures, the eye movement, that all of that, the kind of softening of the small muscles around the eyes, that that uh, people report and I experience is a sense of really being heard, of being valued, of mattering in the world. That what is important to me if I'm speaking to you and if you're doing that, it's like, oh, I I trust that you care about my experience, particularly that you care about it if I'm in distress about it in some way. Um, And so that actually has a name Marshall Rosenberg has come up with, which is called Silent Empathy. Has four parts. It's about observing what the other person is doing without judgment, and just checking in, sort of guessing what, what might their feeling state be right now, and then what need might they be meeting or not meeting, out of which that feeling state is arising. That 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 person as a whole organism is interpreting their world moment by moment, as to whether it's meeting their needs or not meeting their needs, and reports that to themselves, so to speak, by how they feel. So we as organisms are pattern recognition animals. We recognize these patterns of what goes on around us. We take that information in, and at a not conscious, it can be conscious, but often at a not conscious level is where we're interpreting whether this is okay, not okay at the sort of basic level, but then is it meeting our needs for respect, consideration, intimacy, love, care, concern, touch, you know, food, water, air, those are needs also, 